Hey, Jake with BNH. Uh, welcome back to a Zoom call in my bedroom. Today, we have a very exciting guest. We have Glenn Connolly from the Kansas City Chiefs. He is director of content and video production there. And today, we're going to be talking about his experience using uh, the RE camera system uh, in capturing football. So let's talk about uh, camera systems. So you use RE uh, systems currently. Um, you were using them in for the Rams in Los Angeles, is that correct? We demoed the the Amiras probably back in 2016, our first year. We demoed them for a bit. Uh, it was with all the move and everything. We were just kind of piecing everything together. We had we'd started off uh, in St. Louis. We were probably one of the first teams that had purchased the cinema cameras. When I first started, we were shooting on you know 5D Mark IIs, and as, as DSLR video kind of became more of the norm. Uh, most other teams would be shooting on P2 cameras or, um, you know, mini DV, that sort of thing, which we, we were transitioning out of that when I first started. The great thing about the Amiras is that they're really, when you boil it down, it, they're very simple. The menu is very easy to digest. Um, it, it's really user friendly. Each year you have new interns and things like that that you have to you want to have something that's pretty simple and easy and user friendly. You know, it's it's a super simple system. Once we got the uh, the Amiras, we've had um, a Fuji twenty to one twenty Cabrio. We had uh, um, the Canon seventeen to one twenty, and having those, it's kind of an all around really really nice running gun lens that you don't have to be switching off if you go to a community event. Mm -hmm. um, and they were also allowed us to have that extra reach when we're shooting like something like during the game, like bench sound uh, behind the bench, you have enough that you can get in there tight when you want to get in there because mm -hmm. you're limited. You have, a, you know, you can only be in certain places. So yes, right. You had a little bit of extra reach there without having to switch to a 70 to 200 or, or you know, something like that, you know, so it was just a, it was a lot simpler, a lot easier to build those out and rig those out and not have to be worried about uh, changing things out. The, we had a lot of issues like the FS7s, the handles were breaking all the time. Just, you know, they, you throw them in a bag and you're a little bit rough with them when you're going out and you're shooting all this documentary style stuff, running gun, that sort of thing. So question is how many cameras are you using on a, on a, on a game day? Like how many cameras are, are running around? So this past year with the, the Chiefs, we have three Amiras. Um, and then in December, we purchased an Alexa Mini from, from you guys at b and yes. and and really the, the impetus was we just wanted to be, make sure we had as many angles because we were coming up to the playoffs. It was a historic season. We'd rented um, Amira's whenever we had some bigger games, we were able to rent them. So breakdown, really, we do a uh, pre pregame live stream that we would use the Amira for that that would start about 45 minutes before the game. We'd have our talent on the, you know, on the field that we would kind of be cutting that mixing it with shots from the players warming up on the field. So that would be one Amira for pregame. We would have one of the sound operators and uh, the sideline sound shooters. They would have an Amira with a 20 to 120 on it. We'd have our, our wire cam, um, our mic'd up guy, the ISO cam there. And then when we got the, the Alexa, we basically put that on a hi hat um, shooting like extra B-roll. We had a Canon two to 400 uh, EF. Or Amira's and, a, and an Alexa Mini for our uh, our postseason this year. So, you know, we had to kind of bring out all the stops for, you know, what was to be a Super Bowl winning season. So, you absolutely, know, absolutely, that's <laughs> that's the time to that's the time to do it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about what you got from us. Like, I do have a list that we got um, from from our studio. Shout out to Michelle. Uh, if any other NFL teams are watching this, uh, we do have the studios, the only department within b &H, uh, that is authorized to sell uh, RE cameras. They own four of them, and they actually have a dozen, dozens of lenses. So if you're interested in um, looking into this and filling out your team's kit, uh, hit up the studio at b &H. Um, I got the list here. Let me just pull it up. Alexa Mini. So why did you want to go? Is, is the, was size a factor? The purchase we have with the Rams, one of the things we had, a, we had a Movi Pro. So one of the requirements was that we wanted to be able to fly the, the, um, the Alexa Mini on there. We, whatever was going to allow us to be more, a little bit more mobile. And, and you know, we have a limited amount of people on, on the sidelines. So we don't always have a, someone a grip to help carry things and mm -hmm. so kind of one man band. So that was yeah. probably one of the bigger. The bigger are you ones. flying and like, are you flying and then you're taking it off and putting on the hi hat depending on what, what, yeah, time, so what was going on in the game? 
Yeah, we would kind of change it up depending. We, we would kind of have a shot list or an idea depending on the game, the opponent, on uh, what we would do pregame. So sometimes we'd focus more on, uh, you know, we would follow people in with the Movi. Other times we would shoot, you know, tight ISOs, faces, um, you know, different things depending on what we're trying to get or some of the, the storylines. If we were playing like Russell Wilson, like we want to make sure we get shots at him. So maybe we're shooting more um, okay. tight ISOs to get those rather than with the Movi or something like that. And then, right. yeah, usually like we'd shoot pregame with the Movi, uh, maybe a little bit of the, you know, make sure we get the, the intros, the guys running out, you know, fireworks mm -hmm. and all that during the intros. We usually shoot that with the Movi and then, um, and then we'd either break down or maybe some games we would kind of just get some uh, like more atmosphere shots with the with the Alexa Mini or then we would switch it and shoot um, game highlights on the hi-hat. I noticed you have a Hiroshi cable. I assume that's to attach to the uh, Cabrio lens? Yes. I mean, I think one of the biggest things is without having – built the camera and used the camera. One of the things that was really great about the studio is that there are a lot of things that I, you, I don't know exactly what I need or what it is. So I'd be like, hey, I want to use this lens on this camera. They were able to kind of put us in the right spot to whatever we need. I'm like, I don't know. You tell me what I need to get kind of thing. So there's some things like the little things like that or the yeah. power cable from a Movi to the Alexa Mini. Uh, yeah. We had you know, Red Rock Micro uh, motors, like what do we need to power those um, from the, you know, the Alexa to those, that sort of thing that they were kind of able to, to really put us in the right direction and, and help us out on with a lot of those little things that, you know, I had a good idea. I'm like, I want this camera and this lens. Now you make a package that has everything we need when we go to a game or we go yeah. to a shoot that I don't, like, oh, no, we don't have this cable. We don't, you know, we didn't think about that. You know, that yeah, was, that was yeah. a really big help. Yeah, yeah, because I'm looking at, at the at the list here that uh, the studio put up for you. It looks like you had the 85 to 300 Cabrio PL. And so I, that's one of the benefits of these camera systems is that you can put a large servo zoom with a PL secure lock adapter. Like NFL Films was kind of made famous. They were shooting with broadcast lenses and able to follow the ball and get that really tight spiral and oh, come yeah. out wide. Oh, yeah, I love those shots. I mean, that's what we wanted when we when we got the Amiris. And, and the broadcast lens is great because you got a little bit more versatility from being able to go really wide to really tight, but you don't have that depth of field that you would get with one of the, the Cabrios and having a you know, T2.9 lens. So yeah. that was really one of the, the biggest things, like the look of a of that lens is so much different than a look of a broadcast lens if you're shooting you know just highlights from the field so you're able to get a little bit more artistic with some of the shots playing with the depth of field the with the compression of you know we've got them in the middle of the field but you've got the the fans in the background completely blurred out so really having the the cabrios like it, it's it's a way different look than than you get with the broadcast lens which is again great for versatility but when you're trying to get a different look kind of just something a little bit extra that that lens is really really great was it difficult to uh, integrate these cameras into an existing system like would you stop using the other cameras and just go full on with the Ari system or was it sort of a slow process like well let's try this one out here or we're just going with all the, in? yeah with the with the rams we we had two two Amiras and one Alexa. And then we also had, um, again, a number of FS7s. For certain things like a press conference, we would like, we can just use an FS7. But if we're gonna be shooting something that was like content that was like important, we'd always go to the the, the Amiras and the Alexa. And that's kind of the same thing. I mean, with the, uh, with the Chiefs, we, basically shoot everything on those the 20 to 120 running gun we shoot community we shoot everything with with that um, camera we shoot press conferences and when you're shooting these highlights for practice they also look they're very the look is the same as you would get from nfl films for a game yeah. day what we would shoot on a game day so it's a lot easier to mix and match the footage our show the franchise it's our kind of behind the scenes show that we did throughout the off season during the season and being able to have that consistent look throughout the entire, the entire run of the show 
the off season during the season, being able to take NFL films footage, match it up with ours, be able to color correct. It's all the same. Um, it's really, really beneficial. The idea of matching it with NFL films, that makes so much sense. I did. So is that something that, that a lot of teams do often? NFL films provides footage for you guys to use. So NFL films allows teams to have a basically like license their footage. So each game NFL films has at least one shooter on the ground, one shooter up top. So you get at least two angles. Then if it's a, you know, with the chiefs, we had a ton of big games last year. So you would also get additional angles. They would, we played the Ravens. I think they had seven cameras there. They're producing a lot of content for their own shows that we can get access to most of that we can pay we can pay for it basically mm. and uh so each game you're guaranteed at least two camera angles from them if not more and then you match that with our you know four plus angles and then you get the broadcast you know so you have just a million clips from each game so yeah each week we would get that and it's tough when you're trying to match stuff that we yeah. would shoot on an fs7 with the rams or with uh, with an ursa mini like it, it the right cameras on their own but when you try and match that up it's tough so. yeah yeah oh is that is that andy reed calling you can take it if you want no 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 he's got bigger <laughs> things to do than talk to me <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about you kind of you mentioned it briefly i want to circle back to um the content strategy so what are what are you using these cameras for and where's the footage being used like what what kind of content is 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 your department in charge of and where, where's it going any sort of video content that the, the chiefs our sponsors require we're, we're kind of in charge of so really big thing obviously social media that's probably our number one right now we were seeing what nfl films was producing and trying to emulate some of that and we're trying to give kind of a behind the scenes look that normal fans wouldn't get. And when we were in St. Louis, we weren't a really big market team. So we weren't getting a lot of the, the NFL coverage. So we had to find ways that would give fans of the team a, a little bit of an inside look um, that they wouldn't be able to get from no one else was covering it that way. We weren't the, the Patriots. We weren't the, you know, the, the Steelers, things like that, the Cowboys. Um, so we had to kind of produce it on our own. So that's really where it kind of started. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we kind of built up along the way and really we were emulating, like I said, NFL films. So one of the ways, one of the things that they were doing, I mean, before they were filmed, but then they switched to the Amiris and, um, you know, we just kind of saw that and we're like, that's kind of where we need to go. Basically with the Rams, we, we tried to do our own behind the scenes off season show that was similar to like a hard knocks or all or nothing mm -hmm. that we did on our, our, um, like Facebook watch at the time was really where we were kind of pushing people then. And, oh yeah. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, because we could post our own things on there. It was an, it was an easy format. We weren't doing YouTube at that time. Yeah. And uh, so we, we, we started off doing that and it was really behind the scenes. We're trying to get players off the field, go home with them. And then during the season, you know, follow them. What, what were the content we were, we were producing? You asked where we can go and shoot. I mean, basically uh, we would start shooting uh, six hours before kickoff. And it's getting the guys, they park at their, their car and they get out and we're get, we're capturing them as they're getting out of their car, walking down the, the tunnel at the, the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were trying to shoot that and capture the whole, the whole day because with the NFL, it's, you only have one game a week and that whole day is, is kind of a, that's yeah. what capture our content. It's not yeah. a, we don't have four games or anything. So everything that day is kind of amplified. We would shoot in the locker room. The guys getting ready. We, like I said, we mic up the pads and mic up a player during the game. And then, as they're coming out for warm ups, capturing all that, uh, we would get them on the field. So we'd have a. This is the Rams, and we do this basically the same same sort of setup with uh, the Chiefs. Is we'd have a a guy with a boom, a sound op, and uh, a shooter that's basically on the sidelines, roaming around trying to get sound bites. And uh, we'd have a camera that shoots B-roll. So they would just be kind of either, you know, shooting 120 or 60 frames a second, trying to get slow motion B-roll, uh, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then we would have another guy that would be like our mic'd up. He would be shooting, just ISOing the one player from up top. We also are in charge of all the video content um, on the video boards that are on during the game in the stadium. So we have to- Okay, so that, that's you too. Yeah, okay, everything yeah. up there, okay. Yeah. We got web, social, uh, in stadium and then like local TV. And so you're using RE cameras for all of that? 
Yeah, yeah. Wow. We've got so many different things going on, like on a game day or even on a, a day of practice where we got guys out shooting practice. We've got guys setting up for press conferences. We have got guys in the studio set up for interviews, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Are you seeing more Ari Cinema cameras being used on the sidelines? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, since they went to the Amiras, it was kind of a when we got them with the Chiefs were one of the first ones. I think it was the Chiefs, I believe the uh, Colts, the Cowboys, they'd had them for a while. Uh, and then it's slowly risen. I know the you've got the, the Cardinals have them. We, the Rams, we've got Indianapolis, the Ravens have a bunch. Like there's more and more each year. It's kind of more and more teams are seeing that other teams have been able to do this and be able to capture this content uh, and kind of have that seamless look a lot of teams are kind of catching on, you know, it's, it's obviously a, a large investment, but it's kind of, you see the value in it when other teams are doing it, you can point to them and be like, look at this cool stuff that they're doing. And yeah. they're able to, part of that is they're able to do it with the, the mirrors, the Alexas, that, that sort of look to it. Uh, I had one other question um, about uh, resolution. It is how much of, how much of that do you worry about? You know, for what we do, a majority of it, resolution is not a big deal like nfl films all the stuff that they shoot is pretty much all 1080p um the, the reason is they have to speed is a huge part of their kind of workflow because by monday afternoon they have sent True. all that footage that they they all they have a server rack in each one of the stadiums that they transfer all the footage back to um mount laurel new jersey on sunday at the game they transcode all that and then have that out by Monday afternoon to maybe Monday morning to all the teams. So for the most part on a game day, it's so much footage. I mean, you're, you, each person is going to have roughly three to 500 clips on a game day that you then have to come in Monday and log. And then if it takes two hours to transfer them, you know, it's, we need to have that stuff ingested and ready to go. Um, and you know, process so we can start logging on Mondays. So speed. So and what's yeah, so? What's your so you're, you're shooting it in? Are you shooting 2K HD? Or are you just, like what is your chosen resolution? We, we usually do like a mix of, of 1080p and a little bit of 2K. Uh, okay. We did more 2K with the Rams. The way we have it set up and their workflow with the Chiefs, um, we've basically stuck to like 1080p, and that's been pretty successful. We had a, we upgraded our server before last season, so with a good amount of space and. and and uh, storage that that's been really helpful so but yeah I mean you still you think about a full season and all of our content when we got to you know this quarantine we basically transcoded all that it was somewhere about 60 terabytes and that was at 1080p so you know if you're shooting 4k for everything it's gonna that adds up real Quad, quick quadruple that number yeah wow that would that's a lot of space yeah absolutely what's the typical frame rate you guys are shooting in i'm curious project frame rate everything we shoot is you know 23976 so 24p and then uh really it, it depends on what we're shooting and one of the things i think that this kind of change too is that everyone got really in love with uh, shooting all, all slow mo when that kind of came out with that like the FS seven hundred when you were able to, you know, for the first time you were able to shoot one hundred twenty frames one hundred eighty frames a second yeah. and I've seen a lot of the teams and a lot of other um, you know things on social you're kind of taking that a little bit you're taking it a little bit back because the camera is at twenty four you were used to seeing that you can see that everywhere now these cameras like the look of them is so it's, it's so pleasing and it looks so cinematic that you're seeing more and more emphasis on 24 and capturing natural sound and kind of having that to be an extra layer in there. So not just relying on slow motion for all your projects. And then most of the things that the biggest things that we're doing is it's more narrative. You're able to tell more of a story when you have the sound wood to go with it instead of just a 30 second clip of someone catching the ball. When, when are you going to use that in most of the things that you're, producing it looks great for certain things but when we need to make a quick social video we can't have this this awesome pat mahomes throw and catch it's 45 seconds long at 120 yeah. frames a second so we mix it we mix it. it it's a little bit of both but um really 24 and 120 with like 60 in there depending on what the 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 Action project is. we're working on is yeah do, do you feel like you have to stay on top of like the new social media to stay relevant with the younger kids who are watching like are you do you have a snapchat do you have a tiktok like and are you using ari for that stuff one of the biggest things has been the push to social media we used to produce you know the chiefs used to have three shows three 
local TV shows and they ran 52 weeks long. They were all throughout the off season. Um, yeah. With the Rams, we had three at, at one point and that it's kind of gone away from, you know, producing our content to put on local TV because we can control our platforms and message more and they can see more viewers than they would if they're on the local Fox sports. So now the big push has been, you know, started with a little bit of like Facebook watch and now it's come really the big focus has been like YouTube. So mm -hmm. they were able to produce our own long form content. It's able to be viewed. You can watch it on your phone. You can watch it on your computer. You can go on your Apple TV. There's, it's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of options. And with our long form, we, we've been focused on the long form with like the franchise, but also the social aspect of it as well. The, the quick, social videos that live on uh, Twitter. The NFL basically has to allow the teams to get on these platforms. They have to be an approved platform. Okay. So TikTok was obviously the latest one. And uh, that's been one of the big focuses for our social team where they're, they're kind of a part of our group as well. We were one of the first ones to kind of adopt the, then really get into TikTok. We're the number one team in the NFL and TikTok. You know, some of them are cell phone videos, but we do use some of our footage from game days, from practice that in our TikToks, um, they were able to, to edit that stuff together to, to put that in there. So yeah, it definitely helps. And I, I think we're going to see more and more of that and also more and more vertical video. I think that's, that's kind of a, a way that things are, are trending too, which yeah. I was vehemently against the, uh, it was a, you know, 16 by nine all the way. And then, yeah, yeah. I think us old players. school guys. Yeah. Us yeah, old school guys were like, no, 16 by nine. That's the way to go. But yeah, yep. I, we might now be outvoted at this point. Yeah. Between, and it was the square one by one. And now, you know, then it was on Instagram stories. We got to make these, you know, nine by 16s and, you know, I'm slowly mm -hmm. kind of catching on and yep. whatever is going to uh, allow the, the viewer, the fan to have the best user experience. That's what we have to do it, whether we want to or not. I mean, it really just comes down to what the fans want. I'm going to let you go because I'm sure you're a busy man and uh, you got better things to do than talk to me, but good luck this season uh, defending that title. Yeah. Please give Travis Kelsey a shout out for me. All right. I will. I gotcha. Number one fantasy keeper. Appreciate you taking the time. Uh, Jake will be an H guys. Just keep rolling.